Brian Hallwell is the publisher of Edible Manhattan and the editor of Edible East End and has been at the forefront of the growing Eat Local movement. Brian? Thank you, Diane, and thanks to everyone for being here. And thanks to the Food Tank, which is a young organization, but from the turnout tonight uh, here and on the web, uh, it's clear that the Food Tank is now a keystone organization in the food movement in America. Uh, as we've heard today, there's an urgency to broadening the discussion on food waste because of its huge impact, um, and also because there's still so much low-hanging fruit, so to speak. Uh, there are many sectors of our food chain that aren't even engaged yet. As one example, the recent United Nations Food and Agriculture Report showing what a big impact food waste has on climate change decided not even to include seafood, a major part of our global diet, uh, which we know has a major waste component called bycatch. That is the portion of what's hauled onto boats that is not brought back to port that's thrown overboard. That's estimated to be 30 to 40 percent of our global seafood catch. That's a huge chunk of food waste, not even on our radar, radar in many ways. And there are many examples of countries around the world, Australia, Norway, that have had zero bycatch by policies and have effectively eliminated that waste, bringing all that, forcing fishers to bring all that food back to port and finding a, a suitable market for it. Now, I don't want to talk entirely about seafood, uh, but I wanted to broaden the discussion further. Uh, to talk about schools and school food service, what they're doing and what they can do more of, and why they're an ideal ally to reduce food waste in the short term and begin to build that constituency of eaters that will be committed to reducing food waste over the long term. And I'll draw um, uh, from a personal example, which I'm falling back on more and more these days. Um, I was recently at a harvest time party, dinner party with friends, and uh, like good adults, uh, when the tasks of shucking corn and cleaning beans came up, we delegated it to the kids, um, who happily made a mountain of husks and bean ends in no time. And when our host, not having a compost pile, grabbed the pile of scraps and put it in the garbage can, something funny happened to a few of the kids, including my kids. Their jaws dropped. Uh, they implored us to rescue it. Seriously, this subset of children either had compost piles at home uh, or had seen composting at their school, so it had become social anathema for them to toss all that good organic matter. But not all the kids reacted that way and not all the adults reacted that way. So it's not enough, uh, as we think about farm to school programs, to just start school gardens. Uh, we need to teach kids from soil to soil, so to speak. And the home economics practices that go into recognizing food waste and preventing it, how to use leftovers, how to understand sell-by dates or take them with a grain of salt, it really needs to be drilled into them. Uh, it needs to be learned. And I've gleaned a few examples from my sister publishers uh, of edible magazines around the country that I'll share. Uh, from Edible Nutmeg in Connecticut, the Norwich Public Schools worked with two local soup kitchens, the Parent Teachers Organization, and a local Girl Scouts troop to organize a big food recovery drive. It was first inspired by the excess food inventory sometimes at schools, left at schools just before summer break or other big holidays, but it grew into a regular delivery of excess food, uh, as well as getting students and teachers involved in food donation in general. Um, from Edible Manhattan, and, and perhaps we'll hear more about this, the New York City School Food Waste Compost Program, administered by the city's Department of Ed and Department of Sanitation, is extensive. I think it has uh, grown into the largest in the country. Uh, compost bins are available in, city, in school cafeterias and kitchens, uh, and stations for children themselves to separate out unfinished milk, apple cores, and napkins with big buckets labeled compost. Uh, this didn't exist when I went to school in New York City, and it didn't exist just a few years ago. Um, from Edible Green Mountain and Shelburne Farms in Vermont, I learned from Jen Cirillo at Shelburne Farms that in Vermont, like its schools all over the country, as federal dietary guidelines have required schools to feed more fruits and vegetables in the meal, schools are seeing an increase in food scraps waste that they've never had to deal with before because before they were dealing with more processed foods. 
Um, at one school alone, they saw a 10 pound a day increase in compost that inspired them to consider raising and slaughtering a pig raised on those wastes, although that was ultimately um, uh, vetoed by the school district. Uh, and in the Burlington School District, schools have compost captains, kids who are in charge of ed educating other kids about compost. There are many other examples from edible Hawaiian islands, from edible Portland and Oregon. Um, so at small and large scales, the bottom line is there's clearly more that can be done to give our children the information they need, not just to waste food as their parents do, and for schools to be part of the effort as well. Thank you.